one of the best ways to make your home cozy this winter season is with candles. Mark Towns, co-owner of Edgewater Candles, joins us now to show us how to make scented soy candles at home. Mark, thank you. I can almost smell the candles from here, almost. <laughs> yes, take it all in. And the great thing about Edgewater Candles, you can either just buy a candle already made or you can make them at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wanted to show you how we do our candles uh, in our classes here, which is super fun. It's a, a great way to experience the candle making process for yourself and express yourself through scent. Uh, can I show you how to do that? Of course you can. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put my empty pitcher on this scale and I am going to add um, some fragrance. And I'm, today I'm going to use our cedar lavender fragrance, which is our most popular fragrance. Cedar lavender? Put, yeah, cedar lavender has this wonderful woodsy slash floral, really calming vibe to it. It's, it's fantastic. So I'm gonna put the 10% oil in here. And then I'm gonna add hot melted soy wax from here. And Mark, and why is it so important to use soy wax for you, you guys? Well, we love using soy wax because um, soy wax is something you can just grow more soybeans like that. Um, other waxes, um, like uh, maybe petroleum byproducts, which is not our favorite thing to burn in our air. There's nothing wrong with those kinds of candles. We just prefer to use soy for our candle making. Um, plus, soy burns cleaner. It has less soot when you burn it. Oh. Uh, so we really like it. And, you know, soy is amazing. Yeah, is it something that you can, I've known some candles, you can actually touch some of the wax and actually use it on your skin as maybe a moisturizer or something like that? Does, is the, do the soy candles do that? It is safe to do that. Our, uh, all of our fragrances are skin safe and non-toxic. And so you can do that. It's just soy and non-toxic skin safe fragrance oil is the only ingredients we use in our candles. So oh. absolutely. Fantastic. Okay, what's next? So we've mixed the fragrance, we've mixed the soy. Mm -hmm. Yep, and now I'm going to use um, a jar and a tin. I'm going to do a little bit of a jar and a little bit of a tin to show you how we can um, turn these everyday vessels into beautiful soy candles. So I'm going to use this wick, which is a braid of cotton and paper. I'm going to put it in our very special wick setting device. Okay. And so this is just a regular mason jar. And... Ah, I've got a wick in this one. Well, that looks easy, right? Oh my goodness. I mean, that looks perfect. So did you take like a, a piece of wax or mm -hmm. paper off? Or what, how did you get it to stick like that? Thank you for asking. There is a little stickum that I put on the bottom of these wicks uh, so that they will adhere to the base of my container. Ah, okay. Great. So, yeah. So it's funny you said you used a, a cotton uh, wick, a cotton and something. Is, 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 I always thought that the, the, the burning... Um, the, the, the soot and the smoke came from the wick. So it comes from the wick and the candle itself? Yeah, the soot can come from a variety of places. And the way to minimize soot is to keep your wick trim. It's really important mm. uh, for all of the times you light your candle to keep the wick under a half inch. Um, and that will prevent the candle from being, you know, emitting soot and covering the sides of your jar with yes. soot. Um, when you burn one of our candles with a trim wick, uh, the jar will be clean the whole way down to the whole life of your candle, all the way to the very end. It's oh. amazing. So cool. Okay, so yeah. we've got the wick in the yeah. jar. And then mm -hmm. you pour the so uh, now, wax in. Yes. So uh, I'm going to pour this into this jar here. I just love the color of melted soy wax. It's so yeah, pretty. Yeah, it is so pretty. Mark, I have bought your candles before. They're so fabulous. And you're right, Thank because you. at the end, you have a mason jar. You can reuse the mason jar, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Or you Absolutely. can put another candle in it. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to help. Yeah. Um, so how do you get it to I'm stand up straight? The wick. That is another great question. Thank you for asking. Yeah, the wick is um, just paper and cotton, so it's flopped over to the side, but I have this special tool. It's a mm. wick centering device that I'm going to attach to the candle like so. Huh. And this will help the wick stand up straight as it cools so that when the candle is fully solidified, um, the wick is centered in the candle like oh, so. perfect. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. Mark, if we sign up for a class and we make some candles, how many candles will we leave with? And do we leave with some of these tools? You will make uh, two of our tins. And what's 
extra cool is you can choose one of our scents, obviously, but you can blend the scents together. So if you wanted to make a blend of cedar lavender and tomato leaf, go for it. You can mix all those together because we have all of the oils that we use to make our candles here in the shop. Oh, so you can have a signature scent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So very cool. All right, Edgewater candles. Yeah. All right, this is something you can do if you want to stay in. Can you take these kits home and make them or do we have to make them in the actual shop? For now, you can make them in the shop. We are considering making an at-home kit. That's a great idea. All right. I want part of the profits. I just gave you the yeah, idea there. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for being with us. Happy New Year to you, Mark. Thank you. Happy New Year, y'all.